though yet of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the memory be green, and that it us befitted to bear our hearts in grief, and our whole kingdom to be contracted in one brow of woe, yet so far hath discretion fought with nature, that we with wisest sorrow think on him together with remembrance of ourselves. Therefore, our sometime sister, now our queen, the imperial jointress to this warlike state have we, as twere with a defeated joy, with one auspicious and one dropping eye, with mirth in funeral and with dirge in marriage, in equal scale weighing delight and dole taken to wife. <laughs> Nor have we herein barred your better wisdoms that have freely gone with this affair along for all our thanks. <laughs> Now follows it, you know, young Fortinbras, holding a weak supposal of our worth, or thinking by our late dear brother's death, our state to be disjointed out of frame, colleagued with this dream of his advantage. He hath not failed to pester us with message, importing the return of those lands lost by his father with all bonds of law to our most valiant brother. <laughs> <laughs> So much for him! <laughs> and now, Laertes, what's the news with you? You told us of some suit. What is Laertes? <laughs> you cannot speak of reason to the Dane and lose your voice. Well, what's thou beg, Laertes? That shall not be my offer, not thy asking. The head is not more native to the heart, the hand more instrumental to the mouth than is the throne of Denmark to your mother. What wouldst thou have, Laertes? Dread, my lord, your leave in favor to return to France, from whence, though willingly, I came to Denmark to show my duty in your coronation. Yet now I must confess, that duty done, my thoughts and wishes bend again toward France, and bow them to your gracious leave and pardon. Ah, uh, have you your mother's leave? What says Polonius? He hath, my lord, wrung from me my slow leave by laborsome petition, and at last, upon his will, I seal my hard consent. I do beseech you, give him leave to go. Take thy fair hour, Laertes, time be thine, and thy best graces spend it at thy will. <laughs> but now, my cousin Hamlet, and my son. A little more than kin and less than kind. How is it that the clouds still hang on you? Not so, my lord, I am too much in the sun. Good Hamlet, cast thy night of color off and let thine eye look like a friend on Denmark. Do not forever with thy veil it live, seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest his common. All that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. Aye, tis common. <laughs> if it be, then why seems it so particular with thee? Seems, madam? Nay, it is, I know not seems. Tis not alone my inky cloak, good mother, nor customary suits of solemn black. Nor the windy suspiration of forced breath, no, nor the fruitful river in the eye, nor the dejected behavior of the visage, together with all forms, moods, and shows of grief that can denote me truly. These indeed seem, for they are actions that a man might play. I have that within which passes show, these but the trappings and suits of woe. Tis sweet and commendable in your nature, Hamlet, to bear these mourning duties to your father. But you must know your... Father lost a father, that father lost, lost his, and the survivor bound in filial obligation for some term to do obsequious sorrow, but to persevere in obstinate condolement is a course of impious stubbornness. It is unmanly grief, it shows a will most incorrect to heaven, a heart unfortified, a mind impatient, an understanding simple and unschooled, for what we know must be, and is as common as any the most vulgar thing to sense. Why should we, in our peevish opposition, take it to heart? <laughs> Fie! It is a fault to heaven, a fault against the dead, a fault to nature, to reason, most absurd, whose common theme is death of fathers, and who still hath cried from the first course till he that died today, this must be so. We pray you, Throw to earth this unprevailing woe, and think of us as of a father. For let the world take note, 
You are the most immediate to our throne, and with no less nobility of love than dearest father bears his son, do I impart to you. <laughs> For your intent in going back to school in Wittenberg, it is most retrograde to our desires. And we beseech you, and you to remain here in the cheer and comfort of our eye, our chiefest courtier, cousin, and our son. Let not thy mother lose her prayers, Hamlet. I pray thee, stay thou with us. Go not to Whitmore. I shall in all my best obey you, madam. <laughs> Why, tis a loving and a fair reply. <laughs> Be as ourself in Denmark. Adam, come. This gentle and unforced accord of Hamlet sits <laughs> smiling to my heart. <laughs> come away! <laughs> Oh, that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew. Or that the everlasting and fictitious cannon can self-slaughter. Oh, God. Oh, God. How weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fie on it. The fight. Tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely. That it should come to this, but, but two months dead. Nay, not so much, not two. <clears throat> so excellent a king that was to this, Hyperion to a satyr. So loving to my mother that he might not beteem the wisdom of heaven, visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember. Why? She would hang on him as if increase of appetite had grown by what it fed on. And yet within a month, it, let me not think, Holt. A little month, or ere those shoes were old with which she followed my poor father's body like Niobe, all tears. Why, she, even she, oh God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with mine uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. Oh, most wicked speed, to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It will not, nor it cannot come to good, but break my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Hail to your lordship. Oh, I am glad to see you well, Horatio, or I do forget myself. The same, my lord, and your poor servant ever. Oh, my good friend, I'll change that name with you. What make you from Winburg, Horatio? Marcellus? Good, my lord. Good to see you, sir. Good even, sir. But what in faith make you from Winburg? A truant disposition, good my lord. I would not hear your enemy say so, nor shall you do my ear that violence to make it trust of your own word against yourself. I know you're no truant, but come, what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. My lord, we came to see your father's funeral. I prithee, do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. Indeed, it followed hard upon. Thrift, thrift, Horatio. The funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage table. <laughs> I would I had seen my dearest foe in heaven, or ere I had seen that day. My father. Methinks I see my father. Where, my lord? In my mind's eye, Horatio. I saw him. Once. He was a goodly king. He was a man. Taken for all in all, I shall not look upon his like again. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Saw who? My lord, the king, your father. The king, my father. Season your admiration for a while with an attent ear till I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to you. For God's love, let me hear. Two nights together had these gentlemen, Marcellus and Bernarda, on their watch in the dead vast in the middle of the night with thus encountered. A figure, like your father, armed at point exactly, cap a peg, appears before them and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Thrice he walked past their oppressed and fear surprised eyes, whilst they Stilled almost to jelly with the act of fear, stand dumb and speak not to him. This to me in dreadful secrecy in part they did, and I with them the third night kept the watch. 
as they deliver growth and time for the thing. Each word made true and good. The apparition comes. I knew your father. These hands are not more like. Where was this? My lord, upon the platform where we watched. Did you not speak to it? My lord, I did, but answer made it none. <coughs> Yet once we thought it lifted up its head and did address itself to motion as if it would speak, but even then the morning cock grew loud and it vanished in haste away and shrunk from our sight. This is very strange. As I do live, my lord, tis true. And we did think it written down on our duty to let you know of it. Indeed, indeed, sirs, but this, this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. We do, my lord. Armed, say you? Armed, my lord. And fixed his eyes upon you? Most constantly. I would I had been there. It would have much amazed you. <laughs> very like, very like. Stayed it long? As one with moderate haste might tell a hundred. Longer. 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 Not when I saw it. <laughs> I will watch tonight. <coughs> Perchance to walk again. I warrant it will. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all. If you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still, and whatsoever else shall happen tonight, give it an understanding but no tongue. I will requite your loves. Upon the platform, twixt eleven and twelve, I'll visit you. Our, Our duty, duty to your honor. honor. Your loves is mine to you. <laughs> My father's spirit in arms. All is not well. I doubt some foul play. Would the night were come. Till then sit still, my soul. Foul deeds will rise, though all the earth overwhelm them to men's eyes. <laughs>